consideration of a moratorium on vehicular consent searches. I think we have a brief report from the manager. Mr. Alman, thank you. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Item 7.1 is a proposed uh, moratorium on traffic stop consent searches uh, for the Fayetteville Police Department. Uh, this item was brought forth at the January 3rd work session and uh, Council asked that we bring this back uh, for the meeting tonight for consideration. The proposal is a four-step proposal whereby, uh, first of all, a 120-day moratorium would be put into place whereby at, during that time consent searches, traffic stop consent searches would not be permissible uh, in the city of Fayetteville by our department. It would involve the first of all step one which uh, would identify an organization uh, external to the Fayetteville Police Department to review, review all traffic stops, policies, procedures, and standards of conduct. The second step would include a complete purchase and installation of cameras into uh, all patrol vehicles. To date we have installed 126 uh, ca uh, cameras into uh, police cruisers and uh, we have 53 yet to be completed. We're doing about three a day on average so we expect to have uh, all of our cruisers uh, that are used for patrol purposes equipped with cameras by uh, approximately March 1st. Step three would be to develop a reliable and valid police citizen contact data collection reporting system and work is moving along very nicely on, on that action item as well. And step four would be to review, revise, and implement changes to the current citizen and employee complaint processes. Uh, that would be a part of the review which is a part of the scope of services provided by the consultant that would be selected. Now, um, during the time period since January 3rd, I have uh, received and reviewed the credentials of several uh, agencies that are qualified uh, to prepare the type of study that the council is uh, considering here this evening. And I'm prepared to uh, hire a, a firm by the name of, uh, that goes by an acronym NOBLE, which stands for the National Organization of Black Law Enforcement Executives. The lead consultant for Noble, which would be on site uh, as early as tomorrow, is uh, Jimmy L. Wilson, who's chief of police retired from the uh, Washington, D.C. Um, police force. Uh, assisting him would be Assistant Chief Andrew Kennedy, a 30-year law enforcement veteran who's retired from the city of Greensboro, uh, North Carolina, and consultant David Scott, deputy chief of police who has 31 years uh, as a law enforcement veteran. Uh, we, we think that uh, they can be complete their work, uh, reviewing all the policies, have the written report, and scheduled for a presentation before the City Council within about 45 days. The cost of that study is estimated at about $30,000, $25,000 fee, with an ad additional $5,000 for travel hotel accommodation and other reimbursable expenses. Be happy to answer any questions. Mr. Crest, who did you say the chief, retired chief from Washington, D.C. is? It's a, um, I did say chief, but it's actually a, a deputy chief of police of the city of Washington, D.C., uh, Jimmy L. Wilson. Wilson? Yes. He was in Washington, D.C., and before that, Suffolk, Suffolk, Virginia, and before that, Jackson, Mississippi, and Canton, Mississippi, as chief of police. Hey, Mr. Thomas, can you speak to that first part, since it looks like we found an organization to come in, and thank you for making that happen, that we also want to make sure that included some opportunities for citizens, and we know there are a lot of varying opinions on the subject, but opportunities for people to have input in this process. How, how do you envision those working? Yes, in order to get the uh, proposal put together, uh, we actually sent uh, uh, this organization a copy of the proposed moratorium and stressed the need for uh, inclusiveness and, and uh, citizen input throughout the process. Okay, any other questions for Ms. Diamond?
Okay. The dark. Hey, Mr. Roman, I, I did have a question. First off, thank you for your, your, your hard work on this. Um, that's good news about step two. 126 of the 179 cameras are installed with only 53 left and one march. Um, that, that's, a, that's good news for us. The, um, I noticed on the, on the time frame, based on that and then based on the 45 days, you, you believe at this point that you can accomplish all this within the 120 days that were established? Well, obviously the bulk of the work is going to be done by the consultant and they've given us uh, an estimate of 45 days uh, from the conclusion of the uh, site visit, which, uh, which would, would fall into that 60-day time period that you just referenced. I think 60 to 75 days certainly uh, looks to me that we would be complete uh, all four of the steps that are outlined in the action plan, probably closer to 60. Okay, six, so 60, 60 to 70 days from the day or from from the date of the site visit? I just want to make sure I'm clear on that. Well, the proposal says 45 days from the date that uh, they conclude the site visits. Uh, they will be uh, have in our hands the written report, and then we'll follow that with a council presentation. Yeah, I guess my, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to time frame this out in my mind, 45 days from the conclusion of their site visit. Um, the intent would be to do the site visit as quickly as possible. And they're going to be here tomorrow if the council votes uh, in the affirmative this evening. Uh, they'll begin the engagement tomorrow afternoon. And, and, and the estimated time to do their site visit? I uh, don't have that specifically. Uh, it's less than a week. Less than a week. Yes. Any other questions? Uh, let's see, Ms. Applewhite, then Mr. Bates, I believe. I did. Mr. Iman, you mentioned $30,000. Is that for the initial site visit, or does that include any follow-on engagements with the community? Is this no. a total cost, or? That would be for the scope of services outlined in developing the study, reviewing all policies, procedures, interviewing officers, talking to the public, talking to council members. Um, if the recommendations come back that the X, Y, or Z was determined and we need training, for example, to accomplish that, that would be an additional charge. Okay, they, so we'll just have to figure it out as we go along based on the results of their initial meeting. The study will kind of develop the menu for the future. Thank you. Mr. Bates? <clears throat> Mr. Hyman, what, you just said the last sentence or two about what the... Um, Consultants are going to do review the policies, procedures. Can you repeat that? If you sounds like you had it written down, you spit it out pretty nice. Yep. Okay. Now, is that what um, is that what the police I, department? I do better. Would? I'll read it to you. Okay. The study will focus on traffic stop policies and procedures, compliance with the accreditation process, training needs, compliance with CALEA mandates and corrective actions, all data collected to determine whether bias-based policing has occurred, whether possible patterns indicative of bias-based policing are department-wide or confined to individual officers and other issues as specified by the City of Fayetteville at the time of the agreement. And that included the, the uh, public input, the discussions, and, and those things. All right, thank you. And is that pretty much what the, is that what the police department went through to be accredited? Uh, lots Everything's of, been reviewed and double-checked and triple-checked by outside agencies? A lot of this was done as a part of the accreditation process. And yes, sir. Were we accredited? Yes, we were. Thank you, sir. Is that it, sir? Mr. Hare? Thank you, Mayor. Um, Dale, when you spoke about the, uh, the input with the public, explain, is it community watch leaders? I mean, how are we actually getting to the public? Yes, we discussed those things. Uh, uh, I know we, we discussed the local leadership of the NAACP, um, the uh, community watch leaders is one group that was mentioned specifically, the Marin City Council, um, other community leaders in general, uh, public representatives, uh, just a broad uh, cross-cut of the uh, the population of the city. 
and is it through well I, I was wondering just about the means of contact of getting out there to them so are we going to do some or are they going to do some form of um, uh, radio is it th through the news I mean how, how are we going to actually make those contacts with the people no, they'll make personal contacts these will be personal interviews um, I have an envision they don't go into that level of specificity but um, you typically don't you can hire somebody to do a job you don't try and tell them how you want to do it uh, and, and I appreciate that, but the public contact is very important. Thank you, sir. And, and possibly if, if this were to pass tonight and, and uh, we can just have continued updates, like at our meetings at the work session, the staff can brief us on those developing plans as they uh, emerge after the crowd is under contract. Mr. Fowler, do you have some questions, sir? Yes, sir. Mr. Eyman, do you know uh, how many other police organizations this group has worked with? Mm -hmm. Did they mention that at anything? Ever established. Uh, I'm, I'm working with so many organizations now between this and the uh, the chief uh, uh, search. Understand. I don't want to run numbers together. Uh, this this is their proposal, and it doesn't talk about that. But somewhere in the background information, they talk about when uh, Noble was created, uh, and they've been around a number of years. But I don't want to throw a date. 1976. 76. Thank you. It was either 76 or 96, and I wasn't sure. Um, so they've been around since 76. They've done a number of studies on uh, racially biased policing. Uh, they've worked with a number of organizations. I can't tell you exactly how many at this time. Okay, I was just wondering, have, and have they done that with, with organizations that have been accredited? I'm sure they have, yes, right. based on the information that's presented. Okay, uh, thank you. Yes. The only thing I want to be sure of that uh, we in the process of dealing with uh, public input, that we make sure that we get input from uh, Methodist College, Fayetteville State, and FTCC, that they'd be included in that uh, list. Okay, any, any other questions for uh, Mr. Ms. Chris, did you have one, sir? I, I didn't. Are you caveating to say they have to talk to Fayetteville State, Mr. Matthew? Was that? No, I would just like for them to include input from those institutions especially those that uh, have uh, criminal justice programs and things of that nature. So we get a cross-section, cross-view. <clears throat> so it wasn't saying that, that they must. It was just asking if they could include those. Thank you. Okay, I think that's it, Mr. Eyman. Stand by, sir. Okay, we have a motion here. Yes, sir. Um, the recommendation that we have tonight, uh, based on the staff's input, is we can adopt the moratorium, do not adopt the moratorium, or provide staff alternate and or additional guidance. And I'm gonna choose the latter um, based on the information we have tonight. I'd like to move, uh, make a motion that we implement a moratorium on the use of consent searches for a period of 120 days or until completion of the identified and specific task with a final presentation of the findings at a public meeting of the city council, whichever occurs first with ongoing in progress reviews at work sessions uh, during this period. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion on the motion? Ms. Davey and then Ms. Applewhite. I just want to um, clarify that the moratorium is for traffic stops only. That is correct. Okay, Ms. Applewhite. Is that it, Ms. Davey? Okay, Ms. Applewhite. Yes. Um, I, I do have a question for staff, if I could. Sure. Ms. Bradley, Ms. Patricia Bradley, please. For the police department. Ms. Bradley, if you could, um, there's been a lot of discussions about whether or not the city of Fable is legally able to implement a, mentor, a moratorium on consent searches. And if you could, um, you don't mind sharing your opinion on that, your legal opinion on that. Yes, ma'am, there are several opinions out there, and there are differing opinions. Um, I think we all agree, with regards to consent searches, we all agree that it is a matter that should be addressed. It's a matter that polarizes our community, the state, and the country as a whole. However, it is my opinion that is an issue that should be addressed by the state legislatures or the courts and not our local government. 
Are there any other law enforcement or um, legal organizations that also support that basic opinion? We have opinions from the Sheriff's Association, um, from approximately six different attorneys who have rendered opinions um, that say that counsel should not act on this, and there are equally opinions that counsel should, or at least two or three. Thank you, ma'am. Um, Chief Bergamine, please. So a lot of the discussion is in terms of our authority to implement um, a moratorium on consent searches has been focused on whether or not we are legally authorized to do that. As Ms. Bradley said, there are differing opinions on that. Um, if I could, I asked you the last time if you had the opportunity to uh, give your position on that. Can you t tell me if we are found to be uh, illegally able to, or we're not able to uh, uh, implement moratoriums, what is the impact to the police department in terms of the certification, your, perhaps your personal certification, and the certification of police officers? Well, I believe it was deemed illegal by the courts. Yes, sir. That, if, uh, it if it was deemed illegal by the courts, that uh, of course I would uh, lose my certification, and those that would obey that order would probably lose theirs. What, what does losing? That's my opinion. What does losing certification mean? <clears throat> that means. Uh, that we're disobeying the law. We can't do that. So does that mean you can't do your police duties or what? That's what that would mean, that we would be in violation of law. If I could, thank you, Chief. Uh, Ms. McDonald, you are the lead attorney for the city. Can I please ask your, your legal your legal opinion on whether or not the city council, council is legal legally able to implement a moratorium um, on consent searches for the city Ms. Sapa White as I have shared with the council before it is my legal opinion my legal opinion is based on my 15 years of experience as a local government attorney and almost 10 years representing this city as a city attorney I recognize that there are different legal opinions and I have certainly shared those with council those opinions that Ms. Bradley alluded to, who I might add is a junior associate in my office, as well as the six attorneys that she referred to, refers to, all uh, represent either police associations, have some relationship uh, as criminal attorneys, uh, and I am not aware of any attorneys that have stood up and said that the police department cannot do this who specialize in municipal law. Um, Representative, Representative Glazier, Representative Glazier sought the opinion of the state legislature, their um, research department. Can you tell me what, articulate what their position was, not Ms. Bradley's position, but the state legislature's research department's um, position that Rick Glazier offered to us? I solicited through Representative Glazier an opinion from the research staff for the General Assembly. The General Assembly research staff attorney's position was that it was contrary to state law. However, consent searches are permissive. They are not required. And therefore, that is where our opinions differ as to our ability to allow the council to impose a moratorium. But the research department, their opinion, and they're not associated with the police association, their opinion was that we did not have the authority to do it. I'm sorry? The research department is not a sure. part of okay. Sure. I was referred to the six attorneys that Ms. Bradley referred to. Okay, so I just have one last question for you. Um, if we move forward with a moratorium on consent searches, do you believe that the city of Fayetteville could be potentially liable for a criminal court, a uh, criminal case be brought against the city of Fayetteville if we implement the moratorium. No doubt that you would be able to defend us well if we were, 
but do you think that a vote on a moratorium on consent searches could possibly lead us to a criminal lawsuit, criminal investigation, the city of favor? Certainly there is a possibility of some type of lawsuit. Thank you. Mr. Bates? <clears throat> Mr. Fowler? Here. No, thank you. Good, good point. Effective. The date would remain effective one February, or uh, the date of the initiation of the uh, site survey. Yes, sir. I'd like to ask the chief a question, please. <clears throat> Yes sir. yes, sir, Chief. You said that if, uh, if the police did not do consent searches under discretion of the city council saying we wanted a moratorium and that that was found to be improper at the time by a higher authority saying that we did not have this, that, that you would risk decertification because you would be not following the law. Is that what I heard? What I said was if that was in fact a <clears throat> violation of law due to the different opinions that should we do that, and it was found to be a violation of law, we on the Fayetteville Police Department would be being, uh, be obeying an unlawful order that was not allowed by state law. Okay, um, currently the, the police have the discretionary authority to ask for a consent search, is that correct? Yes. If they do not ask for a consent search, are they in violation of the law? Nope. Thank you very much. <laughs> Is that it, Mr. Fowler? Any other questions? Yes, sir. <clears throat> yes, Mr. Chris. <clears throat> Ms. McDonald from Vail. I read the state statute, but I just want to clarify. I don't think it says consent searches will be conducted, must be conducted. I think it infers that consent searches may be conducted. Am I correct? then the word may leads us to options, does it not? That the police officer has the option of conducting a sense hurt or not conducting one. Am I correct in my analogy? That is correct, Mr. Thank you. Any other questions? Mr. Hart, let me ask you to restate that motion, please, sir. Be happy to. Uh, the motion is to implement a, a moratorium effective 1 February 2012 or upon initiation of the site visit on the use of consent searches for a period of 120 days or until completion of the identified and specific task with a final presentation of the findings at a public meeting of the City Council, whichever occurs first. Thank you. Can I say something real quick, Mr. Mayor? Yeah, and I, and I need to say something, so you go ahead. Okay. Well, first off, um, you know, I just want to make it clear from my perspective, <clears throat> I'm very supportive of our police department. I want to thank Church, uh, Chief Bergamine and his department. I had a chance to go out and ride with the police Friday night. I spent six hours on the road with a patrolman. It was a very enlightening uh, experience, and I have great respect and uh, admiration for all the young men and women who wear a badge and protect us every day. Um, and so with that said, that's uh, why I think it's just imperative that uh, to any degree that we can, that we can stress the professionalism that these young folks perform in their duty, uh, we need to guard that. And, uh, and I hope that what, what I have proposed tonight will do that. And I think we all echo uh, the Mayor Pro Tem sentiment there. And this issue, I would argue, is not about a moratorium. It's about accountability and transparency. And in fact, we're all accountable to someone, and that includes the police department and includes the city council. And, when an issue continues to grow and divide our community it, and it remains unaddressed by staff, as this one has for over a year now, then the council does have the final responsibility to step in and consider a change in policy. In fact, we did that before. In January 2010, this city council voted 9-1 to one to change a policy, a police department's policy, on the treatment of sexual assaults in our community, only after a lot of careful dis uh, consideration. We can't let the debate on legal authority become yet another red herring that joins a list of did the mayor and mayor pro tem have the right to approach the manager? Should we have gone to a work session first? Who was in the meeting? What color were they? Who wasn't there? What did they know? When didn't they know? Did the staff have enough time? A moratorium is not legal. We didn't have another public hearing, and now tonight we might lose our certification. 
We can't allow that to continue to just be another red herring in this community. There have been few decisions that have come to this council that don't involve competing legal opinions. It is the nature of the job that we do. And we listen to all sides and ultimately the 10 of us who are most directly accountable to the 208,000 people who live in this city, we're charged with making that decision. I personally don't mind being a legal test case if we're a legal test case for what is right. Amen. And I would ask you this each before you vote tonight. If we're willing to risk differing legal opinions when we make decisions, policy decisions, on vinyl windows or on Loopy the Pig, then surely we're willing to support a decision to ensure that the rights of every citizen in Fayetteville, North Carolina. We're here, sir. We're here. Ms. Applewhite. Uh, no further comments, ma'am. All right, ma'am. Thank you. Let me ask you a vote, please. That's a vote. That's a vote. That motion carries. Those in favor, Mr. Chris, Mr. Hurst, Mr. Shivani, Mr. Art, Ms. Davey, Mr. Hare, Mr. Massey, and Mr. Fowler in opposition, Mr. Bates and Ms. Applewhite. Thank you, Council. We'll take a five-minute